and welcome to Great SpaceX, a channel dedicated to daily updates on rockets in the space industry. There have been huge updates on today's episode, so let's dive right in. SpaceX has been waiting months for approval from the FAA to launch Starship rockets from its Starbase launch site in South Texas. In the interim, the company has been developing a Starship launch site at Kennedy Space Center in Florida as a backup option, and most likely, SpaceX will leave Starbase to get there. But Greg Abbott, Texas's Republican governor, just stated recently that he will do all he can to ensure SpaceX stays in Boca Chica. Abbott even criticized the Biden administration for interfering with the FAA approval process. Why is Abbott so defiant? Will it all turn out the way he wants? And what is Biden's reaction after all the criticism? All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The chances of Elon Musk moving his company's rocket launches to Florida have increased because the FAA has yet to give environmental clearance for the expansion of operations at Boca Chica. Musk has said he might have to move rocket launching operations to Florida if there are any further delays in getting environmental clearance. He has said research and development could continue at Boca Chica. Just doing R&D at Boca Chica will not please economic development leaders in the Rio Grande Valley. They view the potential of rockets being launched from Boca Chica as a great boost for the region's tourism. When asked by veteran broadcaster Ron Whitlock of Ron Whitlock Reports whether he is concerned about losing SpaceX, Abbott said, what am I going to do if Biden interferes with the ability of SpaceX to launch from Boca Chica? I am going to be working every step of the way to make sure that they are going to be able to launch from Boca Chica. We heard the vision from Mr. Patel himself about what they are working on and our job is to make sure they are able to achieve their vision. And I have worked with Elon Musk very closely with regard to Tesla and the Gigafactory in Austin, Texas and we will be working with him very closely every step of the way in Boca Chica for the future of SpaceX. We want that future and that vision to come from Boca Chica from Brownsville, Texas. Whitlock followed up with, and not to Florida? Abbott responded, correct. But Abbott isn't the only one pushing the FAA to approve quickly for SpaceX. Sergio Tito Lopez, chairman of the Brownsville Navigation District, or BND, that runs the city's port, told the Rio Grande Guardian that he had been in communications with the region's two congressmen, representatives Philemon Vela and Vicente Gonzalez, about how to pressure the FAA to grant environmental approval for the Boca Chica site so SpaceX doesn't up and leave. These decisions are actually quite understandable. Before Musk arrived in 2014, Boca Chica was home to some of the most unspoiled beaches in Texas, along with a modest community of some 40 homes. But just a few years later, a small SpaceX launch pad built near the beach has turned into a sprawling compound with hundreds of workers, assembly facilities, and tank farms. And now Cameron County is becoming a mecca for Musk fans and space enthusiasts from around the world. Money and people are pouring into the Texas border region thanks to the world's richest man and his promise of a space revolution. Sometimes even a tweet from Elon Musk can supercharge a Texas region's transformation. Having said that, Elon Musk has an outsized presence in Texas. The Cameron County economy has been transformed by Musk supporters, space junkies, and investors betting on his name. Not only SpaceX, but Musk's car company Tesla will also bring great benefits to Texas as both headquarters and a gigafactory are built there. In short, Elon Musk changed the destiny of Texas and that's why Texas leaders don't want Musk to leave. This means they have to urge the FAA to quickly approve the PEA of SpaceX's Starbase. However, what we're most curious about right now is Biden's reaction in the face of all this criticism. Unfortunately, there is still no sign of Biden responding to these promptings. I'll just take a page from Elon Musk's book and suggest that he's probably just dozing off. If you hear anything about Biden's reaction, please let us know in the comments section down below. Thanks in advance. While pending the approval, SpaceX not only quickly built Florida's first launch tower and pad, but also stacked and conducted a series of tests on the new duo for Starship's first orbital flight. After a few false starts and at least one pneumatic proof test that likely saw Booster 7 pressurized with benign nitrogen gas, SpaceX began stress testing the upgraded Super Heavy in earnest on April 14th. First, the booster was filled about a third of the way with roughly a thousand tons of liquid nitrogen. 
or a combination of liquid oxygen and liquid nitrogen. Once the rocket was fully chilled, there were clear signs of some kind of added stress as large sheets of ice that had formed on the side of B-7's skin broke apart and fell off. Only ice close to Super Heavy's base was visibly disturbed, increasing the odds that the behavior was a sign of some or all of the structural test stance hydraulic rams simulating Raptor engines. It's also possible that the stress was caused by pressurizing Super Heavy's tanks to the point that they began to appreciably deform, though that type of testing is far harder to differentiate. Nonetheless, it's likely that Booster 7 isn't done with the stand just yet. SpaceX could benefit from just about any data gathered about the performance of Super Heavy's new thrust puck during simulated Raptor startup, throttling, and shutdown, both at liftoff and during boost back and landing burns. SpaceX might also want to simulate engine out scenarios that would result in asymmetric thrust. Assuming B-7 survives this particular series of tests and SpaceX is happy with its performance on the structural test stand, the upgraded Super Heavy could be ready for Raptor installation and integrated wet dress rehearsal and static fire testing in the near future. And as a piece of side information, Boeing just finally announced the schedule of the second attempt of its Starliner's Orbital Flight Test 2, or OFT-2. The company said on April 14th that it had selected May 19th at 6.54 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time as the launch date and time of the OFT-2 mission. This mission will send an uncrewed Starliner spacecraft to the ISS, this being the final real-world test for the spacecraft before the crew ride on it for the first time. As the mission name implies, OFT-2 is the second attempt for Boeing Starliner at this mission. The first OFT launch successfully made it to space but failed to reach the correct orbit due to a software problem on the spacecraft in December of 2019. Hopefully this time, Boeing gains some good luck and we can be closer to two certified commercial spacecrafts in America. And that's it for today's episode. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can support us even more by becoming a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. Which part did you like the most? Every comment and share helps us grow. Thanks a lot. I, I actually just don't care about hope or enthusiasm, motivation. I just give, every, give it everything I've got. Um, let me put it this way. If you need inspiring words, don't do it. <laughs>